And so I'm going to do this one the longer way, but I'll kind of move through it a little quick. Some of you might not understand that method, right? But actually, I'll do this really quickly because I think I can probably figure it out. We know the first two terms, again, have to be 3n and n. And we know my last two terms have to multiply to give me a, po to give me a positive 2. So it's either positive 2 and positive 1, or negative 2 and negative 1. However, I look at my middle term, and I know my middle term's negative. Therefore, I know these two factors have to be negative. So therefore, I know that these two have to add to 3n squared, and these, not add, to multiply to 3n squared, and those two have to multiply to a positive 2. But then, when I do the middle and the last terms, or the inner and the last terms, I know that when I multiply them and add those together, I have to get a negative 7n. So what I notice is if I do 3n times negative 2, that will give me a negative 6n, and then plus a negative 1 times n will give me negative 1. Negative 6n plus negative n is negative 7n. There's your final answer, right? But if you're like, eh, I just don't understand that, we know that this is also in the quadratic form, right? So we have a other than, other than 1, you do a times c and b. And if you guys don't have this or you forget it, you can always write this down. You want to say, what two numbers multiply to give me a c, but then add to give me b. So then we look at this, and we say, all right, a times c is 3 times 2, which is 6. And then b is going to be negative 7. So you say, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6, but add to give me negative 7? Negative 6 and negative 1, right? Yes? OK. So then what I do is I rewrite my equation. 3n squared minus 7n plus 2 equals 0. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with these two middle terms. So now I'd say 3n squared minus 6n minus n plus 2 equals 0. Okay, you see what I did? All I did was I took these numbers and I replaced the middle term. Negative 6n minus n is still negative 7n. These are equivalent equations. That's true, right? That's still true, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. those are equivalent equations. All I did was I broke up 5 into 4 plus 1. This is the same thing. I'm just breaking up negative 7 into negative 6 minus n, or negative 6n minus n. That's all I'm doing. But the reason why I like to break it up is because now we can apply our factoring technique of grouping, which tells me to group the first two terms and group the last two terms. Now I factor out the GCF, which in this case, 3n squared minus 6n, I can factor out a 3n. And that's going to lag me with an n minus 2. And then here I can factor out a negative 1, which will leave me with an n minus 2 equals 0. Now you can see that n minus 2 are the same, so I can factor those out. n minus 2, factor out to 3n minus 1 equals 0. Do you guys see how now these two are exactly the same? Yes? This one I just kind of did by trial and error. Here I kind of followed a pattern, but you're going to get to the exact same spot. Now we need to solve them, so I can use zero product property. So n minus 2 equals 0, and 3n minus 1 equals 0. Now I can just solve n equals 2, n equals 1 third. And that's your solution set. OK? There you go. Questions?